Shout out to all my patrons. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, everybody. We're here today to talk about washing your prints with good old, well, nothing good about it. Well, it's good at clean prints. Acetone. Uh, better known to most of you as nail polish remover. Um, it happens to work great at destroying, melting off the resin. So that should give you a hint. Anything that's really good at destroying resin is probably really good at destroying you as well. So basically, if you, if you look at the warnings on the back of the can of acetone, basically says if you breathe this in too much, it can make you pass out and kill you. If you ingest it, it can kill you. Uh, if you get it on your skin, it'll, it's really, it's an irritant. It'll make your skin flake off and I guess eventually kill you. Everything about this can kill you. Plus it's highly flammable. So you want to make sure you keep it away from any real heat source. Um, in addition, it evaporates really, really quickly. It's one of the reasons it's dangerous to be around it when it's open for a long time, because since it evaporates so quickly, that means it's coming up into the air, you're breathing it in. So um, it sounds pretty bad, right? Except that it cleans prints great. Literally, and you're gonna see coming up where I clean off a, a small print, just a dice from um, Bloodfield's Kickstarter. Um, it cleans the resin off if you scrub with a brush, literally in like two or three seconds. So you'll see what I do in the cleaning process. It's coming up in just a minute. Uh, I just dunk it in, give it a quick scrub with the brush, dunk it back in, quick scrub with the brush, and maybe one last dunk, and it's clean. So literally like 10 seconds you can clean up a model. I, I, when I use this, I don't really even use my washing cure because I don't want it in there for longer than 20, 30 seconds. I don't have any empirical data, but I feel like this stuff is so strong that it starts degrading the model after, you know, after 10 seconds or so. Uh, and my prints, if I, when I first started using this, I had it in a little bit longer. They felt really brittle coming out. So I do think this stuff is so strong that it will have a negative impact on your prints. But if you just put it in for a couple seconds, give it that quick scrub, then I think it's pretty amazing as a cleaner actually. Just you have to take proper precautions. So what do I mean by that? And you'll see in the video in a minute. These gloves, nitrile gloves, while good for keeping resin from your skin, uh, to acetone, because I told you how strong it is, uh, these keep resin from your skin and even IPA, right? The 99% the alcohol that I normally use. The acetone's a lot stronger. These gloves are permeable to the acetone. So without, you know, guys, I don't like to get too far into weeds on physics, chemistry, or anything too sciencey in my videos, but basically permeable rating on a glove means how quickly a chemical can pass through. The acetone rating on these gloves is under four minutes. I actually think I actually, just as a test, I used my nitrile gloves once with it and you know dunked my hands in the, in the acetone. I felt within 10 seconds, I could feel acetone getting through to my skin. And, and yes, my skin was a little wet. So even though these are rated for up to four minutes for acetone, don't believe it, okay? I, I don't buy it at all. So when it comes to acetone, no nitrile gloves. What you want is a more serious glove. So you want a glove that is made of butyl, B-U-T-Y-L, rubber. And I guess I'll go look on Amazon. If I can find a link, I'll, I'll link it in the description. So butyl is the best thing for acetone. Uh, it has a rating of over 10 minutes soaking in acetone before there's any permeation. So you're very safe, especially because you should only be exposing yourself to a few seconds uh, of the acetone at a time. And these gloves, I've been using them. They, they haven't degraded to the point sometimes... Uh, and again, I don't want to get too sciencey. Uh, something that doesn't go through the glove can, let's effectively just say, ruin it. Can degrade it, where the glove then becomes brittle and useless, might crack or become permeable. Uh, so far, it hasn't happened with the acetone. But again, I don't touch it very long, even with the gloves on. Um, if you can't get butyl gloves, you can use latex. Latex. The chemical rating for latex gloves with acetone, I think, is just around the 10 minute mark, somewhere between eight and 10 minutes, I think. So again, if you're using latex gloves, I don't even care, even if you're using this butyl, you wanna be kind of in and out with the acetone. You don't wanna like have your fingers have a little bath in there or anything in your gloves, feeling nice and safe. Just use it, use it quickly, efficiently, cover it back up. Remember the fumes from this are very dangerous, especially like in, you could say, well, they use it in the nail salons, they take off nail polish, but they're using like drops of it. When i washing a print, I'm watching in a tub. So the amount of vapors coming up out of that tub are a lot. So I'd advise, if, especially if you have a larger printer, you're doing like big prints, like off of the new Saturn coming out, or if you have a Piopoli or any one of those big ones, um, 
wear a mask when, if you're using acetone because really this stuff, you smell it, you'll, you'll agree with me. This stuff is pretty wicked. So, although it does give you a little nice high at the beginning. Um, but anyway, uh, so please, if you, if, you, if you are using a big tub of it, wear a mask. When you're, as soon as you're done using it, like you, you wash the print off, you put the lid right back on. Like don't leave this just an open vat or jug or container of resin like sitting out for a few minutes. It's getting into the air, you're breathing it in, you don't want to do that. So I, I, you know I make a lot of jokes, but I'm being very serious about the safety on this. I actually think the acetone, having now used it basically for the last two months due to COVID and I can't get the IPA, the acetone, it feels deadly to me when I use it. Like I'm very concerned when I use it. But like I said, I love it now. You just be very cautious, use it very quickly, keep your container covered, wear the proper gloves. Don't mess around with the wrong gloves because uh, you know, I've gotten some on my skin, and if you get some on your skin, like I have, when, especially when I was testing the nitrile gloves, the next day my skin was flaking and peeling off. That's how strong this stuff is. So you, you really want to avoid contact with it if you can. So that's it. Let's check out uh, a quick clip of me actually cleaning a print. So you can see how quickly and efficiently, though, this cleans a print off. Um, and, and I find, the last thing is I kind of find it holds up pretty good compared to IPA in terms of how many models you can wash in it before it needs to be changed. The other thing about changing it that I love, I should say, because it, it evaporates so damn fast, if you take a container, say this size, it gets all cloudy with your uh, junk in there, all the resin, you put that out in the sun for like two, three hours, and then you come back, you've got a hard layer of plastic and everything else has evaporated. You can just peel that layer of plastic out, throw it out, and go pour in a new batch of your uh, acetone and you're ready to go. So I, I, I might not go back to IPA when the IPA is available, to be honest. I might just buy some to keep around to clean off my FEPs when I have to clean my vat and then clean the FEP. Because I'm really scared to let acetone touch the FEP. I have a feeling it's going to destroy it. I haven't even tested it because I'm so scared. I don't want to ruin an FEP for nothing. And my, again, without being a chemist, my gut tells me I put acetone on that FEP, it's either going to eat through it or whatever nonstick properties you know, it has are going to be gone. So anyway, let's look at the video. Hope this uh, helps you guys out in a time when IPA is hard to get. Please like, please subscribe. See you again soon. Happy 3D printing. So here's the dice on the build plate. And it might be hard to see, but it is covered with resin. There's the glove I don't want to use, the nitrile glove. And there you see my butyl gloves. So I'm going to razor blade this off. By the way, this is, this is the uh, Soraya Sculpt. And man, it adheres to the plate like nothing, man. Got to chip it off. Okay. So you can see how shiny and dripping with resin it is. All the cavities of that dice where it has carves out are filled with resin. One dunk, a little bit of scrub-a-dub-dub -dub with the toothbrush. I guess in a few more years when, when, when I don't have my real teeth anymore, I'll, I'll be doing this with my dentures, I guess, one day. Drop it back in, tiny little bit of scrub. Well, I'm not even going to scrub it, just throw it on the towel. And the resin's off, basically from a dunk and a mini scrub. Normally, if I wasn't making a video, I probably would have scrubbed it one more time and dunked it back in really quickly. So very minimal time in the, uh, in the acetone. And, and the resin's gone from that thing, man. You, what you, anything you see shiny on there is just the acetone as it evaporates. And, and while you're watching, it's probably evaporated by now. It evaporates so fast. So that's it. It's that simple. Remove it, dunk it, scrub it, dunk it, done. Hope you enjoyed the video.